Welcome to the Maternity Mentor. Today we will be talking about removing your fallopian tubes and how it can save your life. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm a board certified nurse practitioner and I have over 12 years nursing experience working in mother baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum and labor and delivery. I'm also an IBCLC. I'm maternal newborn nursing certified and I have received training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders as well as perinatal bereavement. There are many reasons why women may need to have their fallopian tubes removed, which is a surgery called a salpingectomy. This includes the treatment of an ectopic pregnancy. Let's explore what a salpingectomy is and what to expect from this surgery. A salpingectomy is the removal of your fallopian tubes. This is done through a surgical procedure that is performed in an outpatient surgical center or hospital. Once your fallopian tube or tubes has been removed, it can make it harder to get pregnant. Women of childbearing age need to understand the risks versus benefits of having a salpingectomy prior to the procedure. Tubal ligation is not the same as a salpingectomy. Tubal ligation is a procedure performed as a means of birth control. Instead of the fallopian tubes being removed, in a tubal ligation the tubes are simply cut and metal clips are placed on the ends of the tubes or the ends are cauterized and burned. Either way, the fallopian tube stays in place and the ends are closed preventing the passage of the egg into the uterus for fertilization. In a salpingectomy, the entire fallopian tube is removed. If only one tube is removed during the salpingectomy, eggs can pass through the other tube allowing for natural conception and pregnancy to occur. If both fallopian tubes are removed, conception will need to be accomplished through other means like in vitro fertilization. There are many reasons salpingectomies are performed. The most common reason is an emergency salpingectomy for the treatment of an ectopic pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy that implants outside the uterus. Most commonly, this happens in the fallopian tube. As the pregnancy grows, the fallopian tube becomes blocked and then swells. Without treatment, the tube can rupture and burst, causing bleeding and infection, which can be life-threatening to mom. Other reasons to have a salpingectomy include a tubal blockage called hydrosalpinx, prevention of ovarian cancer, endometriosis, fallopian tube cancer, ovarian cancer, and antibiotic treatment-resistant infection. Your doctor may also recommend the removal of your fallopian tubes if you have been identified as having either the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene mutation. Both mutations put you at increased risk for ovarian and breast cancer. In the case of breast cancer, on average, 13% of the general population will develop breast cancer. When BRCA positive, the risk jumps to a rate of 45 to 72%. Ovarian cancer in the general population occurs at a rate of 1.2%, but BRCA positive women have rates of 11 to 44% for ovarian cancer. Some of the latest research is showing that the removal of fallopian tubes may decrease your risk of developing ovarian cancer because it is now hypothesized that ovarian cancer may actually begin in the fallopian tubes. In fact, having a salpingectomy reduces your risk of ovarian cancer by 42 to 78 percent. Having a hysterectomy with a salpingectomy reduces your risk by an additional 50 percent. For some of these reasons, your physician may recommend a salpingectomy if you are BRCA positive. Before we continue, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe so you can get our latest content to have a happy and healthy family. Now let's talk about the risks of having a salpingectomy. There are risks associated with every surgery and salpingectomies are no exception. The risks of a salpingectomy include damage to the surrounding area including the organs, blood clots, uncontrolled bleeding, developing a hernia, infection, and anesthesia reactions. 
Additionally, evidence is mixed on whether the removal of the fallopian tubes can affect hormone levels causing premature menopause. Studies have shown that when fallopian tubes are removed for the purpose of birth control or sterilization, hormone levels appear unaffected. However, when fallopian tubes are removed due to an ectopic pregnancy, hormones are more likely to be disrupted. Overall, the chances of affecting hormone levels are not known, but it is lower than having your ovaries removed. Prior to any procedure, you will meet with your physician to discuss the risks and benefits of the procedure. They should also advise you of any alternative treatments that are available to you, as well as what could happen should you decline treatment altogether. Prior to surgery, you may be asked to get some routine blood work done and a physical to clear you for surgery. Your physician will want to review every medication you are currently taking, including vitamins. Some medications and vitamins could interfere with the medications they give you during surgery, so your physician will give you guidelines on when to stop taking certain medications. Additionally, you will be asked to fast or not eat, usually after midnight the day of surgery. If you are taking an important medication, such as seizure or blood pressure medications, your physician may tell you to take those with a small sip of water on the day of your surgery. The night before surgery, you may be asked to take a chlorhexidine shower. This is where the physician gives you a special soap to wash your whole body with. This helps to reduce surgical site infection by reducing the bacteria that lives on your skin. Anesthesia may ask you to drink certain types of fluids, such as Gatorade, at a certain time prior to surgery. This is intended to help your recovery from anesthesia and to assist with pain relief. Make sure you wear or have loose-fitting, comfortable clothes to go home in after the surgery. Finally, you will want to find someone to pick you up after surgery because you will not be able to drive. The recovery from a salpingectomy depends on the type of surgery performed. Most salpingectomies are done laparoscopically, which means three small incisions are made in the abdomen. A laryngoscope and other instruments are inserted and your abdomen is filled with air to assist your physician with visualizing your organs and performing the surgery. Once the surgery is completed, the incisions are usually covered with special tape or glue. This type of surgery takes one to two hours and has a much shorter recovery time. Usually you will go home the same day as surgery. Most people can go back to work in a few days and full recovery is anywhere from two to six weeks. For a more traditional incision, similar to a cesarean section, recovery will be longer. While recovery from the surgery, it is important to contact your doctor if you experience any of the following symptoms. Fever, chills, painful urination, burning when you urinate, difficulty urinating, redness or swelling at the incision site, leaking from the incision site, excessive vaginal bleeding, swelling, redness or pain in your legs, or pain that is not helped by the medication given to you by your doctor. Having a salpingectomy can be very scary. I hope this has explained what to expect from this procedure and why it is so important to consider if you have been told you need it. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember to share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content we will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at the Maternity Mentor.